I'm Nigel Morris Cottrell and this is Financial Crime Basics from FinCrime TV. In this edition, what is financial crime? There is no universal definition of the term financial crime, but there is a general understanding of what is included. Historically, we have said that financial crime means criminal conduct that takes the shortest route between the conduct and the proceeds, and that remains true, but it's not as clear-cut as that definition suggests. For example, burglary. Burglary is where illegal access is gained to premises, or where legal access is converted to illegal for the purpose of, for example, stealing things. Burglary is not regarded as a financial crime, even though the primary objective is the theft of any cash there may be in the premises, and that's because cash is a thing. Yes, I know it's a narrow point, but often that's what law comes down to. Yet, kidnapping for ransom is considered a financial crime, because there is, in most cases, no primary or even secondary purpose other than to obtain money. In this case, kidnapping the person is the means to an end, that is, getting cash. Some people say that financial crime is also known as white-collar crime, but this is overly simplistic. It politicises a distinction that has little or no merit except to suggest to workers that there is a focus on the offences of the elite. How Marxist is that? But while the term itself is questionable, there is merit in what it represents. If we accept that many offences are crimes of opportunity, then there are certain crimes where that opportunity presents itself to some people more than to others. And certain types of fraud, embezzlement, invoicing fraud, securities fraud, for example, present themselves to office workers, that is, white-collar workers, more than those in the foundry or on the factory floor, who are generally called blue-collar workers. It is also said that financial crime is an offence committed by relatively educated people. Again, this is unduly simplistic. While it is true that some offences require a degree of sophistication, in terms of numbers of offences, it is by no means clear that these are the majority of financial crimes. In fact, many financial criminals, analysis of conviction shows, are by many measures poorly educated. It also assumes, falsely, that there is a narrow definition of educated. Many people are educated outside the format of school, degree, work. It is an entirely false premise to say that those who have taken a different path, for example vocational training, formal or informal, are not educated. It is said that the most common forms of financial crime are money laundering, market abuse, currency shares, commodity markets and so on, bribery and corruption, terrorist financing and fraud. But there are more. Here are a few examples. Trafficking people, animals, animal parts, drugs or other illicit substances, plants and the like. Producing live streams or images of illegal content such as child or animal abuse. Sanctions busting. Tax evasion, which is at its heart a form of fraud. Murder for hire, handling stolen goods, intellectual property and computer crime including unauthorised access. Stick with FinCrime TV to learn about these and more in our basic series. Who commits financial crime? There are literally no limits. Absolutely anyone might be a financial criminal. In and about 2000 there were some guidelines. The class most likely to commit financial crime was male, aged 24 to 40, and at least educated to age 18. But today that class has been shredded. The barriers to entry for financial crime are, in many cases, not only much lower but the ways around them are suited to younger people. Certain types of crime, certain types of financial crime, are committed by those with street smarts rather than book smarts, and age is no longer a determining factor, and formal education is not essential for the skills these criminals require. Cultural attitudes have changed in many places. What was once regarded as bad behaviour is now seen as an acceptable form of endeavour. This gives us problems when we're trying to define financial crime in narrow terms. It's easy to give examples, and we have, but it's harder to give an effective definition beyond that generally accepted view that financial crime is criminal conduct that creates the shortest distance between the conduct and the money. And finally we should mention the term economic crime. In the 1990s both terms were in use and they were essentially synonymous, but over time the term economic crime fell out of favour. 
In my companies, we use the term to differentiate between crimes against the state and society, economic crime, and crimes against everyone else, financial crime. But we were unusual, and in general, the term economic crime fell into disuse. However, in the UK, the government has resurrected it, and it is now found in legislation and discussions relating to what the rest of us call financial crime. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow, share and like, but most of all, watch. I'll see you next time.